I'm Andrew Wilson, you're watching Channel 7, and in this video I'm going to play Marvel Champions. This is my favorite game, and it just came out late last year. However, it's a lot of other people's uh, favorite games too. A lot of people love this game, they've been doing uh, video coverage for this game, and you can find all kinds of playthroughs online with all the different characters against all the different villain scenarios that have been released so far. And so I thought I'd do something a little bit different. So today I'm going to have Carol Danvers, aka Captain Marvel, go up against the big bad villain of the Avatar The Last Airbender series, Fire King Ozai. This is a fan-created uh, villain encounter set created by a user named Bob Kyle. So thank you, Bob. And I haven't even read most of these cards yet, so let's discover this together. We'll find out, you know, how good of a job Bob did. Uh, so Fire King Ozai. I'm going to play on standard difficulty, standard uh, setup. So he has one scheme, two attack with an asterisk. He's a Fire Nation Firebender. And after he attacks and damages you, discard the top card of your deck. Okay. And the starting scheme, War Preparations, 1A. Contents, Phoenix King Ozai 1 and 2, standard. Uh, recommended Azula encounter set, so Bob Kyle has also created Azula which I'm not using today, I'm actually using Bomb Scare. Simple encounter set, but I like the idea that the Fire Lord is, is bombing people, is threatening people's lives. Set up advanced to stage 1B. War preparations. Phoenix King Ozai is preparing to invade the Earth Kingdom. Stop him before he reached his destination. When completed, search the encounter deck and discard pile for airship fleet and reveal it, shuffle the encounter deck. Uh, it will burst at 5 per player, I'm playing solo, and every turn it gains 1 per player. Alright, and I'm not reading ahead, I'm going to just find out what happens as we go. So I've already taken my starting hand, I mulliganed away a first aid, so that's in my discard pile. To do a mulligan in this game you just discard whatever cards you don't want, and then draw to replace them. I'm starting out as Carol Van Danvers, my alter ego, and actually I'm going to start by using her commander ability action once per, uh, choose a player to draw one card once per round. So that'll be me. So I'm playing leadership. This is the standard Carol Danvers deck. I haven't done any deck construction yet for the game. Otherwise I'm not sure how I would keep a deck for every character built at the same time. It sounds like a challenging prospect. So for now we're playing standard out of the corset actually version of Carol Danvers. So I'm going to lead with a Photonic Blast. This is a hero action. I have to be in Captain Marvel form. Once per turn in the game, you can change from your alter ego to your hero form or vice versa. So I will change to Captain Marvel form before doing that. Uh, she has a rechannel action that I can't actually use right now because part of the cost is to heal one damage and I haven't taken any damage. So I'm going to discard three cards to pay for the Photonic Blast. Uh, each one provides one resource, at least one of them is an energy resource, which is important in this case, although often it isn't. Uh, but Photonic Blast says, hero action attack, deal five damage to an enemy, and if you paid using an energy resource, we'll draw a card. So not only will we knock Phoenix King Ozai down from 15 to 10, I will draw a card. And now, Photonic Blast is done, and I have just enough cards in my hand to play Mockingbird and Discord Inc. three more cards to provide three more resources. And Mockingbird is an ally, which means she's going to come into play on my team, essentially. She has the ability to thwart and attack, just like Captain Marvel has the ability to thwart and attack. Uh, they actually, she has the ability to defend as well, although she doesn't have a defense value. Uh, she has three health and a response after Mockingbird enters play, stun an enemy. So we will stun Fire King Ozai, just like that, which means the next time he attacks, or would attack rather, and the attack is skipped. Now the last thing before we end our turn is our characters can attack or thwart. Right now there's no threat to remove from the scheme, so we don't want to thwart. So we'll just have both of them attack. Uh, Mockingbird attacks for one and Captain Marvel for two, so it's a total of three damage coming into Fire King Ozai, putting him down to seven. And allies often have consequential damage, which means in this case Mockingbird takes one damage when she attacks. Uh, allies are not meant to stick around all game, they're meant to come in, do something, and then and head out. So uh, Mockingbird 
is already a third of the way toward that end. And that ends our turn. So we'll ready all of our cards in play and draw up to our hand size. Now in Carol Danvers form our hand size was six, but now as Captain Marvel it's five. So I will draw five cards. I'm gonna actually go ahead and check my hand to see if I got any events that I will need to keep in mind during the villain phase, but it doesn't look like I do, so I will put my hand back down and just resolve the villain phase. So the first thing that happens is that this main scheme gains uh, one threat per player. So I'm going to put one threat onto it. And now, since I am in hero form, Fire King Ozai will try to attack me. If I were in alter ego form, he would scheme against me as, instead. Instead of being able to do a direct confrontation, he would uh, advance his own war preparations. But he, instead, I'm a hero, he's going to try to attack me, but he can't because he's stunned. So the stun condition is removed. And then, I need to face an encounter card. So we draw one card from the deck and see what it is. And again, I haven't read these Fire King Ozai villain scenario cards, so let's find out together. So this is a Fire Nation soldier. It has one scheme and one attack. Uh, minion, so Firebender Fire Nation with three health. When revealed, you take one indirect damage. So indirect damage means uh, I can basically go anywhere on my team. I'm gonna try to let Mockingbird stick around, I think. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that damage to Captain Marvel which actually could be useful because that will let me use her ability um, to just heal it right back up. And that concludes the villain phase. So we'll go back to my turn, my second turn. So I have some options here. We have the Alpha Flight Station, uh, action, exhaust it, choose and discard a card, and draw a card. If you're a Carol Danvers, draw two instead. So that could be useful uh, for a little bit of card filtering. Our only card with an energy resource right now is Cosmic Flight. I don't super care about getting that into play, so I might actually use that right off the bat. Uh, we've got a couple options for allies to play. We are playing Leadership, which is the faction, the deck building faction that focuses on having allies. Vision's a bit expensive, and I don't think we'll be playing him this turn, but let's go ahead and discard uh, the Cosmic Flight to Captain Marvel's rechannel. So I'm spending an energy resource and healing one damage, going back to 12, in order to draw one card. And I actually drew energy absorption, so that might shift the plans a bit regarding playing Vision this turn. Because rechannel, or uh, energy absorption is a card that provides three energy all on its own. That's all it does, that's all it needs to do. Uh, it's a big kick in the pants here, uh, in a good way. So I'd like to play Maria Hill as well. Her effect is that if she enters play, draw a card, but I want to figure out the correct sequence to do that in. Because if I want to play Vision with energy absorption, I need to hold on to those, which means I have to discard the Inspired and the Alpha Flight Station to pay for Maria Hill. And then I can draw, use the card I draw from her as well as the energy channel to pay for Vision. I think that's a reasonable plan. Let's go ahead and discard those to play Maria Hill. Draw a card. And I drew Make the Call, which lets me pay a printed cost of an ally in any player's discard pile to put it into play. I'm not going to do that right now, so I'm okay discarding that along with energy channel for or energy absorption for four resources to play vision. Now there is a cap of three allies in play at a time, so I've reached that cap already. Not bad. But until I lose one of these allies, I'm not going to be able to play anymore. So just keep that in mind. I'd like to get rid of the Fire Nation Soldier this turn, although it's not too urgent. It looks like this scenario might be simple. I don't want to speak too soon. But I am a little bit worried about winning too quickly without seeing uh, a lot of the content, because I'd love to see what... Bob Kyle came up with, but and I don't mind an easy scenario by any means. I'm not one of the players who craves the difficulty and the challenge. I love to, to win it, just have fun, play some cards, and win is what I'm all about. But I also want to see what he came up with. Um, so hopefully I don't have to put my foot in my mouth later if Fire King Ozai comes out and beats me up a little bit. But 
Let's see. I could use Mockingbird and Vision. They could both attack the Fire Nation soldier to take him out, but he's actually not even that scary. I don't know if there are any other cards in the deck that count the Fire Nation soldiers that are in play, maybe? Um, I don't know that I would expect that necessarily from Fire King Ozai, but you never know. I'm just going to go ahead and keep the board clean. I have Vision and Mockingbird attack the Fire Nation soldier. Now, they both take a consequential damage for that. And Maria Hill has a thwart of two, which is very high. But there's only one threat on the scheme yet, and I don't think it's worth taking the consequential damage to attack for one or to thwart for one. So I'm going to actually do nothing with Maria this turn. And as Captain Marvel, I'll go ahead and attack Fire King again, putting him down to five. And then we can draw back up. Now I do have two Photon Blasts in my discard pile, but having Fire King Ozai at five makes me think I'd love to have uh, Photon Blast right now. So end my turn, I'm gonna draw back up to five. I will check for any reactions that I might need to know about. Uh, yeah, I do not have any reactions to worry about during the villain phase. So we'll add the one per turn threat to war preparations. Fire King Ozai will attack Captain Marvel. Now, the attack's been declared. It happens automatically. I have the option of trying to defend. I can defend with Captain Marvel. If I do that, she'll be exhausted and she'll remain exhausted all the way through my next turn, meaning she won't be able to attack or thwart. It doesn't restrict my ability to play cards in any way or play action cards of any kind, just using these um, kind of pre-printed actions on the card. And by doing so, I would reduce the damage by one. I don't think that's worth it. He's gonna be attacking me for two um, plus a boost card, which we'll get into, and then if he hits me, I'm gonna have to discard the top card of my deck, which I'm not super worried about that either. I don't mind. A little bit of discarding off the top of my deck. The other option is I could defend with one of my heroes in play. Now Mockingbird only has one uh, health left out of her three, and her thwart and attack are both low. So I actually think I'm gonna defend with Mockingbird, uh, in part just to make room for another um, ally next turn. I saw that I drew Nick Fury, so let's make a little bit of room. Mockingbird, thank you for your your honor served here, and let's see what the boost card is. This is an advance, so every card at the bottom right corner has a little boost area. This one actually you can't tell on advance because there are no boost symbols, meaning the attack's just gonna do two, there's no additional amount. But two is enough to take out Mockingbird, so she's gonna be discarded. And then I need to draw an event card. Supreme Commander, Treachery. When revealed, place one threat on the main scheme for every enemy in play. So enemy, I think that would count the villain himself, so we'll pl place one threat on the main scheme. But good thing we got rid of that uh, Fire Nation soldier, because actually he would have been counted for that. Uh, and if this were a boost card, it would do something else, but it is not a boost card, so. That's it, add one threat to the scheme. That's what it did. So the war preparations are now three out of five. Uh, if it ever hits five, we'll have to read the next the next uh, scheme card. And that concludes the villain phase. Back to us. Now like I said, we do have Nick Fury. I also have Avengers Mansion. So that's four, two four cost cards that I'd love to play. And I have an energy absorption. Uh, which can pay for three of that. So for example, let's say I have three, four. Oops. Three, four can pay for Nick Fury. And one of his abilities, so he gives you three things to choose from, but I almost always choose to draw three cards. I think that's a very common choice. And if I did that, I would have Avengers Mansion, make the call, and three more cards in my hand, which would let me play the Avengers Mansion. And if I happen to draw any of that provide two energy that would potentially even let me play something else after using the Avengers Mansion to draw a card. I could play Get Ready to Ready an Ally. Uh, Vision's good with Get Ready because if you spend an energy, I can uh, 
choose Thor to attack and give him plus two until end of round, which is good. Like he could hit for four at the cost of a card. Uh, and then get ready would actually let me hit for four twice. That, there's something to be said for that. But I don't think I can turn down playing Nick Fury and Avengers Mansion the same turn. So I'm gonna play Nick Fury, paying four. Actually, I'm gonna pay with the make the call just in case. Cause I might be able to do all of that, depending on what I draw. Getting greedy. All right, so pay four, draw three from Nick's ability. Photonic Blast, Spider-Woman, and a Strength. So I did draw energy in the form of the wild energy that appears on Spider-Woman, and I did draw a double energy card on Strength. So I have to decide how I want to pay four for the Avengers Mansion. There's no way... So I could hold on to get ready, pay four with these, to pay, play Avengers Mansion, and the Avengers Mansion says action, exhaust it to choose a player that player draws a card, and if the card I draw provides energy resource, I can use Vision's ability and get ready and do that. So I, I'm just gonna take that risk, that's what I wanted to do anyway, and now there's a chance that I could, I'm not gonna be able to use these for anything else anyway this turn, so I'm gonna pay these four to play Avengers Mansion, exhaust it to draw a card, and it's another get ready. So, unfortunately, no vision shenanigans this turn, but we'll still get to do some shenanigans on top of the ones we've already done. So let's, let's take a look. So I'm gonna use Maria Hill to thwart as planned. Two thwart is too good to pass up, putting the war preparations down to one. Which again, I wanna play efficiently, but I kinda want the game to beat me up a little bit just so I can see what's coming, but I'm still gonna do my best. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna attack with Captain Marvel, put Phoenix King Ozai down to three. I'll attack with Vision, taking one consequential damage, putting Phoenix King Ozai down to one. And then I'll attack with Nick Fury, taking one consequential damage to put Phoenix King Ozai down to zero. Which means we've defeated stage one of the villain. Now, if we were playing on advanced, we'd be playing. We would have started with version two, and then we'd have to beat version three. But since we're playing on standard difficulty, we're not going to use version three at all this game. We're just going to beat one, and now we need to beat version two. So version two comes out. He's got 18 hit points per player. Solo means 18 exactly. And his scheme is now two. His attack is still two, plus. If he attacks and damages you, discard the top card of your deck for each damage dealt, instead of just the top card. So, if he hits us now, we're going to be discarding more cards from our deck. Now I'm going to play Get Ready to ready an ally. I'll ready Nick Fury. And I'll go ahead and attack with him again, taking a second consequential damage. And putting Phoenix King Ozai down to 16. And still have a get ready in play. So this is awkward because all of my allies have damage on them equal to one less than their health. So any of them that I try to ready and use right away, they're gonna go away. Nick Fury goes away at the end of the round no matter what, but he will ready at the end of my turn, meaning he'll be ready during the villain phase and I can defend with him. So I don't want him to die from a third attack this turn when I could use him to defend against this big Fire Lord, Fire King Ozai attack. It's not a terrible idea. I usually hate saving cards, but being able to, well, no, because Vision's gonna die from his third attack anyway, so it doesn't even make sense to save this for that, so. You never know what comes out of the villain deck. I could hit a card that just damages all my allies and then I will have wasted them all. So, this might be a little bit inefficient. Uh, I don't remember how many copies of First Aid are in the deck because I did mulligan away the first one. I could First Aid Vision and then power him up and then use Get Ready on him, but I'm just gonna Get Ready Vision now and attack with him to 
put being as King Ozai down to 14, and Vision will head out to the discard pile. Feels a little weird to do that. I think it makes some sense. Hopefully it's not just camera brain talking. And then of my turn, I will ready everything and draw back up to five. I don't have any reaction events, so I'll hang on to those. Add one threat to the main scheme. Phoenix King Ozai will attack. I will defend with Nick Fury. We'll check the boost card, so he's attacking for two, three, four. I'm not even going to read this card. And Nick Fury is defeated. And we'll draw an encounter card, which is Hydra Bomber. When revealed, choose to either take two damage or place one threat on the main scheme. Hmm. Well, two damage isn't that bad, and neither is one threat. I'm gonna go ahead and take the damage, because then I can use my rechannel ability if I want to, to heal it back up and filter through my deck a little bit. All right, now the Hydra Bomber is obviously not related to Phoenix King Ozai. This is part of the Bomb Scare encounter deck that which I shuffle in. Uh, you always use a standard encounter set and then one other encounter set, and I chose this Bomb Scare encounter. So just imagine instead of Hydra Bombers, this is a uh, another Fire Nation army member scaring some civilians in the Earth Kingdom or something. And Captain Marvel's there to help. So I will start my turn by using the Avengers Mansion to draw a card. Drew an emergency. I have a Hawkeye lead from the front, which would have been good on some previous turns, more so than now. I have an energy channel, but I have a couple of energy um, absorptions in my discard pile. Crisis interdiction lets me remove threat, but it's not super efficient right now. Plus I have Maria Hill, she can just remove the last two threat. Nothing is exciting me. Let's um, let's use Captain Marvel's rechannel. Discard a card with an energy resource on it. Yeah. To I'm discarding emergency to heal one damage and draw a card. I drew a power of leadership. Interesting. Well, I don't think that's going to help me. Uh, not that I'm in bad, in bad shape, but I'm going to play Hawkeye, and I'm actually going to pay for Hawkeye with two copies of Power of Leadership. They're worth double the resources when paying for a leadership card. Hawkeye is a leadership card, which means he's function as four, but I'm overpaying. I'm wasting one anyway. It doesn't matter. Then, uh, Hawkeye enters play with four arrow counters on him, so put the four arrow counters on Hawkeye. And after a minion enters play, I can remove one arrow counter from him to deal two damage to that minion. So that would have been perfect to take out the Hydra Bomber as soon as it appeared, but it's a little late, Hawkeye. I will use Captain Marvel to attack the Hydra Bomber, just to keep the board clear. I'll use Maria Hill to thwart to remove two threat from war preparations, which means she's done. Thank you, Maria and I will play Energy Channel. So this is a zero cost upgrade, max one uh, action, spend X energy resources and put X energy counters here. I'll do that, I'm gonna use the, these two cards from my hand, they're both energy, and discard them to place two energy counters onto Energy Channel. And as a hero action attack, I can discard Energy Channel to deal two damage to an enemy to a maximum of 10 for each counter here. So up to five energy counters that I put there can do uh, up to 10 damage. Right now if I were to discard it I would do 4 damage which would put Phoenix King Ozai down to 10 but I think I'll save it. I'll keep charging up my energy and Hawkeye um, may as well attack. Let's get in, let's take one consequential damage and do one point of damage to put Ozai down to 13. So I will ready my cards and end my turn, draw up to 5 
Still no responses, so then maybe this deck just didn't have any. That's fine. Well, actually, no, I had one that I discarded last turn. The emergency event um, in the discard pile. All right, War Preparations will gain one threat. Phoenix King Ozai will attack us, and you know what? I think I'm just going to take it this time. I don't want to defend with Hawkeye. He's too healthy and useful, and I haven't taken a hit yet. Let's see what happens. So we're going to take two damage plus the boost of two more. So we're taking four damage, and we go down to seven. Now, Ozai's ability means we need to discard four cards off the top of our deck. One, two, three. I think, I think that means we actually stop. I only had three cards left. Uh, I don't think I discard. I don't think I have to discard a fourth one after reshuffling. So, I'm not sure, but not a huge, not a huge difference. However, since I have to reshuffle my deck. I do have to take an additional encounter card. So immediately after that, we're gonna take another encounter card and then see what those are. So the first one here is a family emergency. Ooh. So I can choose to flip to Carol Danvers form and then exhaust and remove this from the game so I can deal with the family emergency or I can be stunned and this card gains surge and it's discarded. Surge means we draw another encounter card, and uh, discarding the obligation means if we mark our way all the way through the encounter deck, we could end up seeing the family emergency come back up. So I think I'm gonna take option A. I'm gonna flip to Alter Ego and Exhaust to go home and deal with the family emergency, which means it is removed from the game. And then the second encounter card is Caught Off Guard. When revealed, discard an upgrade or support you control. If no cards were discarded, this card gains Surge. Oh, so I have to lose the Avengers Mansion or Energy Channel with two counters on it already? Let me check for energy in my hand. I only have one, so I could put it on there and gain six. That's tough. This represents an investment of three cards already. This represents an investment of kind of like five cards, but one of them was a strength, so four cards, and I've already drawn at least two cards off it, so that's like two. So really losing Avengers Mansion is not as much loss as losing Energy Channel. Plus if I can get the Energy Channel up to five, or even four, that's a significant amount of damage. He's only at 13, and if this does six of that, uh, that might be more valuable than the Avengers Mansion can provide me at this point. So I'm going to lose the Avengers Mansion for the sake of beating up Ozai. Let's see how that plays out. So at least Caught Off, or Caught Off Guard has done a sin here, and it's our turn again. So actually, I have another energy channel, but this one doesn't have two counters on it already. So I'm okay with that. I'm going to, let's see, Helicarrier is kind of like a mediocre stand-in for Avengers Mansion. If I want to play that, I could pay with these two cards, for example. And then I could use the one resource that the Helicarrier provides, along with Inspired, to pay for Haymaker. Actually, I'm getting ahead of myself, because since I am in Carol Danvers' form, even though I'm exhausted, and I will be until the end of my turn, I can still use her commander ability to draw one card, so I will do that. I drew Spider Woman, which provides a wild resource, which could mean this is two more energy for the energy channel, which would do eight, putting Ozai down to five, and an inspired on Hawkeye means he could put Ozai down to three. That still would not finish it off. This Haymaker can do three, but as an energy counter, it actually does two already without having to pay for anything. So that doesn't seem like very good value. Spider Woman can do two now and two later. I'm 
I'm actually, I'm liking Spider Woman right now. So let's, let's do that. Can I afford to play Helicarrier and Spider Woman? Well, these pay for Helicarrier. And then the one from Helicarrier and these two pay for Spider Woman. Or. A little bit of off screen sorting here. Let's see. I could just. Pay spider, play Spider Woman using Genius to pay for two of her three. Ooh, use the energy channel in my hand as one of them so that I save the Haymaker's energy resource to add a third counter to this energy channel. And then use Helicarrier to pay for Inspired, which can make Spider Woman plus one thwart and plus one attack stronger. So she can attack for three this turn and next turn. And that's six damage, plus this six damage, plus this one. So next turn, the villain will be defeated. So this is looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll pay these three for Spider Woman. This one for Inspired to attach to Spider Woman. And I'll discard the Haymaker to the Energy Channel for a third counter. I will attack with Spider Woman for three, bringing Ozai down to ten. I will attack with Hawkeye 2, just why not, bring Ozai down to 9, and then I could flip to hero form, but I'm actually not, because I forgot Spider-Woman's response after she enters play, confuse the villain, which means next time he would scheme, he doesn't, so I'll pass the turn, ready my cards, drop to 6, because I remained Carol Danvers, and then... Scheme gets one. Ozai would scheme because I'm in alter ego form, but because he's confused, he doesn't. We draw one encounter card, which is advanced. Oh, the villain does scheme. Okay, so maybe we'll get to see the second second scheme right before the game ends. Um, so he's going to scheme, or it could just totally screw me over. Let's find out. Uh, so he's going to scheme for two plus a boost card. Let me make sure I don't have anything in my hand that I'm forgetting here. No, I have events but not responses, so he's going to scheme for 2 plus the boost of 0. And actually we don't go to the next. Uh, so, I kind of want to cheat and just find out what it is, just to make things a little bit more interesting. So if you don't mind me cheating a little bit for my own detriment, let's, let's just say we hit a boost of 1 and find out what is on Scheme 2. So 2A is Sozin's Comet. Sozin's Comet has arrived. With it overhead, firebenders will gain strength unlike anything they've ever felt before. Advance to stage 2B. Phoenix King Ozai is using the power of the Comet to conquer the Earth Kingdom. You must stop him before it's too late. When an enemy firebender attacks, give them an additional boost card. That makes sense. And if this stage is completed, the players lose the game and we'll lose at 10 per player, which is 10. So, yeah, now when Phoenix King Ozai attacks, he would get two boost cards. In fact, actually all of those firebending minions are firebender enemies, they would all get boost cards, which is interesting because normally only the villain gets any boosts, but now all the minions would get them as well which is a pretty cool mechanic in my opinion. Good job, Bob Kyle. But now it's our turn. Ozai is at, is at nine. We've got lots of options. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play Nick Fury. I'm gonna discard four cards. Actually, I'll draw a card with Carol first. Yeah, I'm just wasting time. I'll discard four, draw three. Oh my gosh. So, embarrassment of riches here. Let's discard two more energy to bring the energy channel up to five and pop it for ten. And 
take out Phoenix Can't Ozai. There you go. Thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, this one seems like a pretty cool scenario. I like the, the Sozin's comma. I'm glad I skipped ahead to that. I don't know if I want to cheat and look through some more of these cards. So Phoenix King Ozai attacks you if you're damaged, you're stunned, or Phoenix King Ozai schemes and then heals, so that's interesting. Raise the land, uh, a side, side scheme that says place an additional threat here for every Firebender minion in play, and it has two advancement for the main scheme. So, oh, and the airship fleet. Oh, I was supposed to reveal the airship fleet too. Let's see. When revealed, discard cards from the encounter deck until you reveal a Fire Nation minion, put it into play, engage with the first player. So really, when I, that was when the, um, the war preparations, when it was completed, I was supposed to search for this airship fleet, which would have then also put a Fire Nation minion into play, which probably would have been a Firebender. Although, unless it has Guard, it would not have change the outcome because I could still just ignore that and just finish off the uh, Ozai. I did do one indirect damage but I could just take that on Captain Marvel. But yeah there's some cool stuff in there. I would say this didn't seem too difficult so if you've been playing the game and you like Avatar and maybe some of the encounters are more difficult for you like Ultron or Claw, um, print this one out. Try it out and uh, thanks for watching.